Hey folks, it's Maxwell here and welcome to a brand new TW9 video. You join us today as we continue the road to full gear for the sickos with AW. You can see we're trying to get Claudio over, we're trying to get him into the best position possible. And at the same time we also need to make sure that Brian's as good as possible. I think the worry is we're not as over as is obviously I'm, I'm used to in previous saves when I've got them over. And obviously they're older. And maybe don't have the star quality, they may have no, no interest in getting ripped. So it could be trickier to get some people we want to the higher level, but it could again just be an exposure thing as well. So intrigued to see how long it takes to get there in with uh, yeah, who will be around by then or who will be retired. But I'm quite happy with how this show's panned out. We've got a lot of people on it, we've got a good few angles as we start to put the pieces in place for full gear. Um, and a couple of storylines lower down the card that I kind of can lead to stuff as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's Dynamite, followed, of course, by Collision. So this week we are at the APG Federal Credit Union Arena. I can't even remember where that is, but we're there anyway. And I thought let's go straight in it with a wild brawl match. I felt like Utah just needs to keep having these matches where he's put himself in dangerous situations and obviously how he comes out, it obviously shows that where he's going in the future. Hangman has a lot on his chest, a lot on his plate, so here he picks up the one over Utah in 9-14 with the Buckshot Lariat. 62 for the wrestling, 51 for the crowd, 69 for the segment. Continues the storyline of Brian's final run because there's about 90 people in that storyline now. But it just shows that you're still vulnerable. He's obviously still conflicted with the whole stuff between Danielson, Claudio, Moxley and Pac. And at the same time, Hangman, well, he's got a few people that have given him issues in this storyline as well, as we're about to see. But good chemistry between them. That lifted the match. So who does Hangman have an issue with? Well, it actually is Darby Allen. So obviously last week we had the fatal four-way match to determine the number one contender. Darby... Obviously, he's had a few issues with the trios champions as well. And he's had issues with Hangman because Hangman blames him. He says, Swerve is a problem. He wanted the championship. Swerve was in the way. He's got rid of the Swerve. And it's typical that someone else from Seattle is in the way. So he is going to make Darby's hell life a living hell. So for this one, the angle was cutting a promo for Hangman, Darby off screen, 63 for the segment. And uh, the storyline continues because they are integrated into it. There's about four storylines running within one storyline. Next up, we had a decent match up here with Mina Shirakawa defeat Diona Perazzo in 6.57 with the Implant DDT. So basically we're going to try and use Mina now. She's obviously been on the roster so it's time to start giving her some momentum. Diona has chilly momentum so we'll have to work with her even though she's had some victories. This one ended up with a 53 rated segment. Pretty similar in terms of in-ring performance. We have a little backstage segment where we see Mariah May seeing Mina again and they start saying, you know, they can't be without each other. Really, we're just building this up towards full gear, as you can imagine. But you can see the storyline is called the Wounds Triangle. So there might be one more piece in this story. So 51, just them um, getting a wee bit of champagne, as they've done. Mariah May enjoyed going off script. And then we see the loser of the match, Diona Perrazzo. And she basically just says, you know, it's she's sick and tired of losing. It's time for her to get the group together and start making an impact in the women's division. So I spoke about how I was kind of toying with the idea of who to get. And I have a rough idea of the trio we're going to run with. So that may debut in Collision, it may be the week after. But uh, the contract's been offered to one. And obviously I said that one was going to be Taya Valkyrie. Is, uh, they've planted the seeds for that in real life, so 45. Next up. I just wanted a kick-ass match between these two, and they've been having a bit of a feud. Both had great, good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Roddy Strong defeats Free Phoenix in 11.36 while using the ropes for leverage, and it was designed so they would have a steal the show match. So a 68 for the wrestling, a 72 for the segment. Obviously the Kingdom and Undisputed Kingdom sort of had a wee bit of an issue with the Lucha Bros and Vikingo. So I thought these two could tangle, and it keeps Roddy looking really strong. A little backstage segment then between MVP and Ricochet again, just trying to lure Ricochet into taking his business card and aligning with him. And he says, you're running out of time, and you're going to soon have to take my business card. 
Ricochet turns around, he walks away, and he bumps into Osprey, and Osprey says, I know you haven't been firing all cylinders, but as MVP, truly the right guy to steer you in the right direction. He's got history, he can't be trusted. Be careful. And that segment is a 61 for that. And then we gave Vikingo his return match as he took on Matt Taven from the Undisputed Kingdom. This one had a... it was decent. 8.35 the victory was won and a 6.30 centre was the finish. Simple, effective. Taven can take defeats. Vikingo can look really good in, uh, with our product with a 72 rating. Uh, 68.35 and a 67 for Vikingo. Because the challenge as well is getting all these guys over. Especially the ones that are having the losses early doors. We then had a little double segment backstage here. We just basically saw the elite talking. So Jack Perry, Kazuchika, Okada, Nick and Matt Jackson. Basically just frustrated that everyone lost championships. Because uh, at the pay-per-view apart from Okada. Perry says he's going to t- keep an eye on the TNT championship match later tonight. But he will get a rematch against whoever that champion will be. Whether it be the, new, the challenger or Daniel Garcia. And Okada says it's fine, he's going to have minimal defences, and then obviously he's going to get it to the Continental Classic, completely fresh, win that, so he doesn't have to defend the title. But then he gets threatened by a former foe from New Japan, it is Lance Archer, and the murder hawk monster basically says to Okada, you know how dangerous I am, why don't I just take that title away from you right now, or meet me in the ring next week. Okada goes, it's fine, I'll face you, a bitch. So it's just my way of making sure we had Okada versus Lance Archer. Continental Championship next week on Dynamite. So 58, Jack Perry struggled when I got off script. Rest it's fine. So you're probably going to see Jack Perry get the TNT title shot down the line. Nick and Matt will see, sort of keeping away from the tag division. Although we could give them a rematch against the House of Black, just in two and two action. And then Okada, Lance Archer next week. 58. So many uh, interchangeable loops. In the TNT Championship match, saw Daniel Garcia defend against Big Bill from the Learning Tree. In a decent matchup, Daniel Garcia defeats Big Bill in 948 with a sharpshooter by the submission victory. It was a bit more believable than a pinfall win against a, a giant. And it gives him his second defence of the TNT Championship. Big Bill benefiting from amazing form and being the flavour of the month. Garcia with a 64, Big Bill with a 53. And that concludes with a 62 rating. So he's someone that's certainly doing well so far as Daniel Garcia. Then I have a little promo, and it's Claudio and Pock, just a uh, Pock, Pack, uh, talking about Wheeler Utah. They just say, Well, Utah, that's another defeat tonight. You've really got to start deciding with these trios championships. Are you part of the BCC, or are we just going to have to beat you up, take that championship, and find someone else? Time is running out, Wheeler. We then have Samoa Joe's return match. As an extremely short match, Samoa Joe defeats Colt Cabana in 529 by pinfall. Storytelling, because it was just to make Samoa Joe look dominant after using the muscle buster. 49, 42, 48. Obviously, Colt's pretty much there to put people over, although these two have great chemistry together. Joe starts in the mod as a heel, so obviously, we want to get him baby face as quickly as we can. So, we'll have him dominating in a good way and this leads to him being called out as a basically a, a promo from I think it's the ramp for the random areas that Moxley would cut a promo it just says I know how much of a very dangerous man you are Samoa Joe but I like that and I feel like together we can produce great violence so just you watch yourself around here Joe because maybe that violence will start when I say and not when you want it to be. So just basically mocks are you warning to some more Joe, but I don't know, when I get thought when I thought about this could be a match up, I'm like, I really want to see this in real life. But I think you get an idea of that's where we're heading to with this. Brian's final storyline has advanced with a segment and a 61. As we get prepared for our main event. We first hear from Brian Danielson who talks about Claudio Castagnoli. And just basically saying, you know, he's always respected Claudio, he's always been a great opponent, a great friend. And he not realises that at full gear, you know, he's going to have to be 110% if he wants to beat Claudio to retain the World Championship. So, 70 rating here. Storyline gains heat. 
That's a strong main promo. Can the match do it? I'd like to hope so, because we did go all out with a mega matchup. And we get the 74. A good technical masterclass. I had Brian Danielson defeat Pack in 2151 with a running knee. So the Basaku knee. 84 for Brian, only 58 for Pack. So we really need to start trying to get Pack over, because that's quite worrying. Solo in advance, he's in gain seat. Obviously, Brian benefiting from a hot new move and public support. Basically, the, the situation here is he's always he's, he's beat Moxley, he's beat Pack, he's got to try and beat Claudio at full gear. So, a 74 for that one. Uh, 72 overall show, so I think we might actually be one of our better shows and we increase our popularity in 18 regions. Obviously, we're limited in various places, but that's up to me. A better network deal, so for me, that is a success. So just before we, we, we jump to Rampage and we jump to Collision, Locker Room Incidents were still putting up even with Prince Nana as my new morale officer, so I think that's just always going to happen. But in between shows, several people have remarked that Christian Cage has been hanging out with Dutch and is starting to have an influence. Okay, interesting. And that's it. So nothing overly massive. So pre-show is complete and we'll be back with Collision and a look over Rampage. We now move along to our roundup of Rampage and Collision as well. Before we do that, I'm just going to give a wee shout out to Bonzo. Uh, spoke to us on Twitter, gave me a few ideas of what might help me with angles. So hopefully we can start to see the implications of that going forward from Collision onwards. Basically try to make more use of background characters to see if that maybe helps with basically getting more score a higher score for our segments basically but i feel for a lot of people like i know i speak for myself on this one where angles have been quite hard to get my head around of what i've got in my head i'm putting down on the game is coming up in the game and we're getting the right score for it as well if that makes sense so i don't know what the best system is with it yet but hopefully we will get there but hey the the first year or so will probably be a, a learning curve and then after that hopefully we'll be nailing it so Quick look at Rampage, what did we book? Well, we had Serena Deep defeat Yuka Sakazaki. We're going to give Nigel matches, and he got a match up against Brandon Cutler. Nice little squash. And he won in a 43 18 match. Promo from Nigel just saying, I'm still going to be around. There's some big matches I still want to try and get. But every now and then you need to be tune up match. We then heard from Mina Shirakawa. We had Jamie Hater defeat Anna J. We had some words from the Outcasts. Of course, that's. Harley Cameron and Saraya. Team Melo picked up the win against Emi Sakura. We heard from the conglomeration with Orange Cassidy, Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly and Rocky Romero. Kyle with some words for his main event matchup, which was a 65 rated match as he defeated Buddy Matthews. It's not going to be a very good 48 hours for Buddy Matthews. Or technically 24, although it might be even a 72 because Rampage is taped. But... You'll see why in Collision. Let's jump into it. So we are at the Loyal Memorial Auditorium for Collision. 1,833 fans in attendance. And the number one contender for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship is our opening contest. It's Claudio Castagnoli taking on Sammy Guevara. And in about the had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. We had Claudio win in 12-17 with the neutraliser. Had the temptation to make us steal the show, but... We opted for just a normal matchup. Claudio picks up the win, gains some momentum from that. Uh, overall, a 68, so that's pretty good. Uh, hopefully, we can start getting Claudio scoring some scores in the 70s. His promo, though, not too good. It was just him cutting some words on Brian, which only got 48. The storyline advances and loses a bit of heat. Claudio here is just basically saying, you know, it's been, it was great hanging with Brian, but at the end of the day, like Mox, like Pac, he has a different idea for where wrestling should be, and at the same time, He's been a world champion of Ring of Honor. He's not been a world champion in AEW. And it's time he has to put himself first and make sure he takes this opportunity, even if it's at his old friend's expense. But then about the dinner of much heat and terrible wrestling, Billy Starks defeated Harley Cameron in 656 by submission. Storytell matchup. Obviously, the plan is Athena and Billy Starks versus Camille and Mercedes at one point. So you do have to get Billy up a little bit. Well, she's still in Ring of Honor, so she picks up a nice wee win here. A 38 overall, she was off her game, but a work in progress, and she's still young. She's going to develop, and that's given her more matches and more exposure on a bigger channel. 
Where a character development angle with MVP, especially in this one where he's on the phone and just says, I hope you're ready, I look forward to seeing you soon. So who's he talking to? Who could it possibly be? Is it possibly Ricochet? We'll be finding out, hopefully, on the next episode of Dynamite. And that was a 53. All I'm saying is, it's not who you think it is. Because there's a very obvious answer to who you think it is, but it's not them. Yeah. We then had a decent matchup. We had Hook defeat Kyle Fletcher in 907 with the Red Rum. This overall scored a 56. I'm quite conflicted how to build Hook because I still feel like his stats won't be so good in this, so it's going to take time. Kyle Fletcher, I think, is one we can take losses with and we can build him up. So we're quite happy again for him to take the L in a 56 rated matchup. We then cut to a backstage segment. We didn't get the penalty on Takeshita because we made them a background player because he didn't really say anything. It was more Kyle Fletcher and Don Callis talking to each other in the 52 promo. But basically it was Kyle saying, you know, he's had a good time with the mentorship of Don Callis. You know, he's not as bad a guy as people make him out to be. But it's time that he goes back to his roots and he feels like he knows where he wants to go. But it's not with the Don Callis family. So he shakes a hand at Don Callis and he walks out. Don's a bit frustrated. But uh, we'll see where this leads to. I think you know where that's leading to as well. But uh, yeah, Kyle Fletcher leaves the Don Callis family here. Next up, we had a little matchup because we had a bit of spare time in the show. And we had Nick Wayne defeat Kip Sabian in 8.47 after Shayna Wayne interfered. I felt like, you know, it's, we've not really done much with Nick, so it was a good opportunity to see what he can do. A pretty impressive 61 rated matchup. Uh, in, in ring performance, sorry, the segment was a 58. Obviously, they've had a long standing kind of rivalry in real life. Christian's beat Kip Sabian, and now Nick Wayne has as well. Kip, I just really need to find what I want to do with him. Next up, we had some tag team action, and it was about to have some decent wrestling from this little feud we've had going. The faction in Gobronare, Rush, and the Beast Motos defeated Hologram and Commander in 1025. When Rush pinned Commander with the Rush driver. In terms of in ring work, Rush was head and shoulders above the rest. I expect that. He obviously is going to be very over and very good in the ring as well. Good thing to see though, because I just put them together. So the fact that Hologram and Commander have excellent chemistry means we can possibly use them as a tag team going forward till they get their overness up and then we can start putting them their own ways. But it keeps Hologram looking strong and Commander takes a defeat. Obviously, the feud is between Rush and Commander. Yeah, sorry, and uh, Hologram. After this, Rush cuts a wee promo. The release the cause in the background. Beast Mortos is in the background. And he just says to Hologram, you know, he had a chance to join them. But he has made an enemy out of the faction Ingrobonable and Hologram. Rush wants him one-on-one -on -one so he can destroy him. 42, and Rush invented a new catchphrase. So that's good to see. That'll help his microphone skills. You'll love to see it. Next up, we had about had some decent wrestling and not a lot of heat. Diona Perazzo defeated Yuka Sakazaki in 10.06 with the Fujiwara Armour. Nice submission victory for Diona. 59 overall. Crowd not too much into it, but as I say, it is two really good technical wrestlers that put on a, a pretty good matchup here today. But we've known for weeks that Diona's getting a little bit frustrated and she takes that frustration, even though she won out on Yuka Sakazaki. And she is joined by Taya Valkyrie. And the debuting Megan Bain. That's the three we're going to put together in the stable. You've got the technical leader of Dona Perazzo. You've got Taya, who can do a lot about everything. And then you've got the muscle of Megan Bain, who I thought initially they were put with Mercedes, but obviously they opted with Camille. So, happy with that one. 42, poor Yuka. The magical girl gets beat up. And, um, yeah. I'll probably put into Twitter that I need a, an, or one of the forums that I need a trio's name for them or a stable name because I cannot think. More women's action. We went for a wild brawl here because Athena has a very high wild brawl or brawling stat. And a decent wrestling, not a lot of heat. Athena defeats Queen Amanita Amanata, I got her right at one point, in 953 with the old face. Uh, 63 overall. Athena benefited from being an amazing forum. Obviously, we need to make her look as strong as possible for her versus Mercedes for the TBS Championship. So, again, two matches that she's got with Mercedes. We want her looking a million bucks. And after this one, we have the promo. Mercedes cuts it on Athena. She says, impressive victory. 
but you still can't you know, even touch the CEO. Hell, Kim, you won't even get past Camille to get to me. And that's a 44. And our main event was for the AEW Tag Team Championships. And about with good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, the Kings of the Black Throne defeated the Lucha Brothers in 1406 when Brody King pinned Penta with Dante's Inferno. But this was due to an interference from Roderick Strong, of course, for the little issues between Lucha Bros, Vikingo and the Undisputed Kingdom. This match was designed to steal the show, hence we could get a good rating so we wouldn't lose pop. And it gives them their second defence of the AEW World Tag Titles. Ray Phoenix carried the match in terms of in-ring performance. So 70 for the wrestling, 74 for the segment, 48 for the crowd. You can see there, Penta was off his game. See, probably would have scored into the 70s as well. But the, the excellent chemistry obviously will always boost for the Lucha Bros. But good to see that there. And we finished the show with the Young Bucks. Beating down Buddy Matthews because he wasn't out at ringside with the, the matchup. It continues the AEW Elite Takeover storyline, but it's really so the Young Bucks can get into the heads of the AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Kings of the Black Throne. That was a segment rating of 53. I don't think we've done too strongly on the promo side of things, so that may hamper us. And... Oh, we had a positive here. So the show increased their popularity in 13 regions, which is good. We obviously had our restrictions, that's fine. The 69 is not too far off. The 74 top match. I'm trying to see what our best promo was. I don't think we did anything too strong. It might even have been MVP at 53. But the show benefited from having a quite a wide selection of angles. Because we had talks, we had promos, we had beatdowns. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with that one. That's actually a better book show for myself. So we'll see if there's any popularity issues, any financial negatives. Not 430,000, so that's good. Still 100 million. So we've made about 700,000. And we gained one in New South Wales. I don't want to go too aggressive with like investments, etc. I want to see how they are at the end of a month. Because if it's a massive loss, then obviously it could implement the save if you're making that for a, a long period of time. So it's basically going to be, probably after Dynamite, I'll have a better idea. Aye, it'll be, it'll be before Collision, but after Dynamite. So in between the two, the next episode, I'll have an idea of like how aggressive we can be. So, catch race for Roos. Roos, that's good. Expect it again. That's what you'll have to see that. Collision, drawn a lot of praise. Timothy Thatcher and Super Crazy have a friendship blossoming. Interesting. GCW hire Conan. Yikes. Booking issues in TNA. Delirious and Tommy Dreamer are having a, a bit of a fallout. Matt Rogers is back. Let's see if there's anything else there. Flamita's picked up a little bit of a knock. He's a broken forearm. Big win for Matt Cardona. As he won the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. Oh, we beat, beat 29 wrestlers in a... Oh, it's actually a bound for glory. So that was the main event. Mike Bailey retained against Jonathan Gresham. Jordan Grace defeated Tasha Steeles. PCO and ABC defeated Dreamer, Loredo Kid and Ryan Nemeth in a ladder match. Rebecca Hardy defeated Lee Ying Lee. The Deaners beat the Good Hands and Alicia Edwards defeated Harley Hudson. Okay. Or champ not in action. Interesting. Cody Rhodes has gone from TNA. He was in a one day, a one loan period, so uh I've got basically I've defeated WWE, TNA, etc. Scouted, so I have an idea of what's happening around the world and the bigger companies. Uh, apart from that, Serena Deep says Megan Bain is a star in the making. She can make us some serious money. That's that's the plan. Uh, say, I'd heard about her a lot, and it was, I think, the Stardom show around about Mania that I actually decided to go and watch. Uh, and I obviously bought it and watched it. And I was like, she's really good. Like, really, really good. I was really surprised that AEW hadn't done more with her. And I, I don't know, I don't think she's on the books, so that's an interesting one. Just under a million viewers, though, overall, and a 1.08 rating. So, yeah, that's where we're at at this moment in time. On the road to full gear in 28 days. So, yeah, plenty of shows to book before then. But as always, thank you for watching. Remember to check out the Great Dogs Off the forums, Fantasy Booker subreddit, TWDB, 
www.bbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbbb